Okay, we will go to our uh, lesson. Today we will do half of chapter 53. But we also have three verses in 52. 在五十二章，我们还有三节的经文，上个礼拜是留下来的。Now the verses in fifty-two, behold, uh, my servant will prosper; he will be high and lifted up and greatly exalted, just as many were astonished at you, my people. So his appearance. Was marred more than any man, and he and his form more than the sons of men. Uh, thus he will sprinkle many nations; kings will shut their mouths on account of him. For what had not been told them, they will see; and what they had not heard, they will understand. 许多人因他惊奇，他的面貌比别人憔悴，他的形容比世世人枯槁。这样他必洗净许多国民，君王要向他闭口，因所未曾传传与他们的，他们必看见，未曾听见的，他们要明白。Now you will notice as I go through here, I'm using the same method that I've just been talking with you about those first two verses. 呃，我接着要解释这些经文的时候呢，就跟。刚才上课之前，我们讲，呃，我跟大家分享的，就怎样来预备一个讲章，怎样的来传道。Now, it looks at first like verses thirteen to fifteen of chapter fifty-two, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen of chapter fifty-two are an abrupt transition from the first part of the chapter fifty-two. 我们看见在五十二章的十三到十五节，实际上是跟五十二章前面的这个经文呢是有一个过渡，是连承上启下的。它承接五十二章又起五十三章。But if we look carefully, we will see that it tells basically the same message that the first part of the chapter told.但是假如说我们我们 再仔呃，这个仔细一点研究的话，我们就会发现这个十三到十五节所讲的内容跟五十二章啊前面所讲的内容没有出入，实际还是在讲同一个同一个这个这个道理。Because you look back in the third verse of chapter fifty-two, and it says Israel was sold for nothing. 啊，比方说五十二章的第三节说，以色列是无价被卖的。See, this is a very humbling thing that happened to Israel. Other people will look and were amazed at it. And then in verse 14, Isaiah says that many people were astonished at you, my people. 在第十四节说，许多人因他惊奇。Now in Deuteronomy twenty-eight, thirty-six, and thirty-seven, Moses said, "Because Israel would sin in adultery." 在第十四节说，许多人因他惊奇。Moses said, "Because Israel would sin in adultery, God would make them a horror or astonishment to other people of the world." 呃，在这个这个生命记第二十八章，呃，这个摩摩西特别讲到，因为以色列人拜偶像，崇崇拜偶像。这个背离神，所以呢，神要使使使他们在外邦人的面前呢，成为笑谈。See so now you'll notice here that in the in verse uh, you'll notice how that in the verse thirteen it it speaks glowingly about the servant. 呃，在以赛亚书五十二章的第十三节，实际上是讲到他的仆人要如何的被高举上升。Now Isaiah, Isaiah in in the chapter fifty two mentions the men, mentioning the servant says that like people were astonished at Israel's sorry con, uh, sorry condition, so the servant will look to the people of his day in the same way. 
嗯、呃，所以以赛亚书五十二章的第十四节讲，许多人因他惊奇。啊、呃，我们要看到这是在讲说，耶和华的仆人也要像以色列一样，这个被别人看到了什么呢？就是因他惊奇。See that was in verse fourteen, and just as many were astonished at you, my people, so his appearance, that's the servant's appearance, was marred more than any man. 所以这里讲到说，许多人因他或者说因你惊奇，然后他后面一个括弧里面讲说，他的面貌比别人憔悴，他的形容比世人枯槁。You see, so the the reverse of that is that he will not look like they expected the Messiah to look like. 所以我们换句话说，他的形象不是像以色列人所期待的那样，是一个。是一个这个这个弥赛亚来临的那个荣耀的大力大能的这么一个辉煌的形象。See, it says his appearance was marred more than any man. 他讲到说他的形容比世人枯槁。Isaiah is picturing Jesus as he looked on the cross. 啊，以赛亚实际上是在这个描绘耶稣在十字架上面的形象。See, but Isaiah had started the paragraph on a note of victory. 但是呢，他实际上是在讲一个一个在呃讲这个基督在获得最最后获胜之前十十字架上面这个形象。Now you see, out of that, what do we get out of that? As we often see so often in the book, Isaiah always ties together the defeats of Israel with the might and victories of God. 呃，我们要来思想一下，在以赛亚书里面常常是把什么呢？就是他的这个百姓被打败，呃，与相应的是什么呢？啊、呃，以这个这个耶和华自己啊、呃，如何的有如何的得胜？所以这两样东西常常是这样一一起出出现。大家来想一想是什么原因 ？And it does the same here with the servant。他现在在讲他神的仆人的时候也是这样。Israel's sufferings were always caused by its sin of idolatry. Ah, we, first, we look at, is Israel's, this, ah, being defeated. Israel's, this, ah, suffering is often because of their idol worship. See, now the servant's suffering and debasement is also caused by sin, but not his. So, this servant's suffering. 他也，他也如此的憔悴，如此的枯槁，如此的遭受如此巨大的苦难，啊、呃，也是因为罪的缘故。但是这种罪呢，跟以色列人这个犯罪的情况不一样，他不是他自己的罪导致的。See, it was the sin of the world that he took into himself. 以色列人罪是以色列人自己犯的，耶稣身上的这个神的仆人身上的罪是全人类啊、呃、所犯的罪，后来又被他担在他的肩上。But being who he was, he was able to overcome the shame and death to rise victorious. 因为他的身份，这个这个神的仆人的特殊身份，使得他尽管担了全人类的罪，但是他最后可以从这个罪的刑罚当中啊得胜，然后呢取得最后的这个这个这个胜利。You see that was verse thirteen. 第十三节。That's um. Thus, with thus, he will sprinkle many nations. Verse fifteen. 在第十五节，他说什么？这样就是通过这样，他必洗净许多国民。See, the result of the victory was that he was able to bring salvation to the nations. 所以很显然，这个神的仆人最终获得的胜利。可以把救啊，把救恩白白的赐给天下万国。God's work of redemption was completed. 这耶稣啊，这个是耶和华所应许的这个救赎的计划，在这个仆人身上被成就。You see, because it says that he, uh, uh, it was done by sprinkling of the nations. 他这里讲到说，这样他必洗净许多国民。And that was an Old Testament term, uh, uh, term. Sprinkling, there was sprinkling of blood. 这个在旧约圣经里面一个重常常用到的一个字啊，是一个带有浓重的旧约色色色彩和
和那个的这个意义的一个字就叫洗净。洗净是什么？常常这个洗净这个字是啊、呃，把这个血用这个血来弹在祭坛上，弹在这个上面。See now look in Revelation five nine, and it and uh it says, Thou didst pour, uh, thou didst purchase for God with thy blood. Men from every tribe, tongue, and people and nation. Ah, 就像在启示录里面最后讲的时候，他说：“你曾用自己的血从万国万民中啊买了人来。” You see, that's what that's what he said、uh, here in this verse fifteen. You see that he, uh, um, thus he will sprinkle many nations, and then and then John said in more detail. 这个以赛亚书五十二章第十五节讲说，这样他必洗净许多国民，就说了这么一句话。但是呢，老约翰在巴摩岛上，呃，得启示的时候，在启示录里面，他更具体的讲是，他是用自己的血赎买了那些从万国万民中买了人来。Then Isaiah goes on and says, all authority on earth, that's the authorities, the kings and what on earth, have to shift their criticism. 这个在十五节的第二。这个前半节的后后后半小节说，君王要向他闭口，就是君王要向这个神的仆人闭口。Because they see it happen before their own eyes。因为为什么呢？因为就在他们的眼前发生了。You see, Isaiah is prophesying how the whole world will have to acknowledge that everything Isaiah has been saying was right。所以以赛亚的意思是什么呢？将来。世上所有的君王都要承认，看见一一个事实，就是以赛亚在这里所预言的关于神的仆人的事，一切都完全的应验。See now, this is that was the introduction to chapter fifty three. 呃，我们看见这一个这以赛亚书五十二章的最后三节经文，实际上是一个承上启下，是一个介绍五十三章的这么一个先奏。See now, Isaiah paints a marvelous portrayal. Of what Jesus did to consummate God's plan of salvation. This Isaiah is using a very detailed, very accurate, very accurate description of how Jesus Christ came to earth in the world of the Gentiles. He said in verse one, he says, "Who will believe our message? To whom will the arm of the Lord be revealed?" Who will believe our message? To whom will the arm of the Lord be revealed? 你看五十三章的第一节开场白就说：“我们所传的有谁信呢？耶和华的膀臂向谁显露呢 ？”See, this message is a message from God. 这个信信息是从神而来。Because the second statement there, to whom will the arm of the Lord be revealed? The second statement uh, uh, refers to God. 这里讲到耶和华的臂膀向谁显露呢？<咳>耶和华的臂膀啊、呃，向谁显露？是实际上就是这个、呃，直接就回到哪里去了？回到神那里去了。So the arm of God speaks of God in action. 当我们讲耶和华的臂膀的时候，是指什么呢？就是行事、做事的耶和华。And so here is God doing something and giving a command. 这里是在讲说耶和华要行事，而且他吩咐这个地上的人。And so what Isaiah is saying is, when the time comes, uh, when the time comes to put it into action, who is going to believe it, and who will realize it? It is God's doing. So, 换句话说，当时候到了，这一切都成就的时候，啊，耶和华的救恩也成就的时候，呃，我们要去传，去传的时候，谁会信呢？那谁要能够看见耶和华所露出来的膀臂呢 ？You see, Isaiah is saying is、uh, exposing how people in the future and even in his day misunderstood the teaching of the suffering Messiah. 所以以赛亚实际上是讲了一个后来几千年的一个非常不幸的一件事情，就是。尽管耶稣基督死在十字架上，死后三天复活，但是呢，啊、呃，无论是在那个年代一世纪的时候，在使徒时代，还是到人类最最末世的时候，像我们现在这个年代的人，常常会误解耶稣在十字架上的所遭遇的这个苦难。See the rabbis knew it was taught in their scriptures. 
这些犹太的先呃犹太人当中的拉比，他们都很清楚，在旧约圣经里面已经教导关于弥赛亚来之前的这么一个这么一件事。But they could not correlate it with their view of a victorious Messiah who would bring glory to Israel. 但是他们就是有非常大的遇到非常大的困难，他们没有办法把这么一个受苦的弥赛亚和他们荣耀得胜的弥赛亚两个弥赛亚合而为一。And that's exactly what. How the what the Jews did when Jesus came. 这也正恰恰就是呃很不幸的，就是当耶稣来的时候，那所几乎所有的犹太人都是这样来对待耶稣的。他们不相信耶稣就是那得胜的弥赛亚。He did not look like a a conquering general that was going to defeat the Romans. 耶稣来的时候是一个加利利来的一个一个木匠的儿子，他不像是一个。啊、uh, ，要来征服世界的一个辉煌的一个征服者的一个一个一个将将军的形象，高头大马的征服者的高傲形象，他不是。So that's why Isaiah starts out with who is going to believe our message. 所以以赛亚很在这里跟耶和华哀叹说，谁我们所传的有谁信呢 ？Who will recognize what when he comes? Who will recognize this to be the arm of the Lord? 这个当主耶稣来的时候，谁会认出他是耶和华的膀臂呢 ？Then、uh, verse two he says, then he says he grew up like a tender shoot and like a root out of a parched ground. 第二节说他在耶和华的面前生长如嫩芽，像根出于干地。Now Isaiah was talking about how Jesus came into the world scene and how the Jewish world. Uh, scene at that time was ill prepared to receive their Messiah. 这里讲到是什么意思呢？就当耶稣道成肉身来到这个世上的时候，来到犹太人中间的时候呢，是犹太人根本就没有预备好，是整个世界也都没有预备好。You see, they were they were not ready to receive the Messiah as the servant of Jehovah. 他们根本就没有。这个预预备好来迎接耶和华的仆人弥赛亚。When Jesus said I am, they wanted to stone him. 当耶稣说我是自由拥有的，我就是他的时候，他们要拿起石头要砸，要砸死耶稣。And、uh, the servant came as an unknown baby into an unknown family of. No significant eligibility. 当他生在这个马厩里面，被包好了放在马槽里面的时候，他是生他他是一个无名无姓的一个小孩，也生在一个无名无姓的一个犹太的小家庭里面。然后呢，这个世界没有预备好迎接这个世界的主宰。In the eyes of the ruling class, even this fellow was just nothing. 在那些当权者的眼里，这个一这个加利利的这个拉萨勒的小户人家里出来一个小孩，那算谁啊？什么东东 ？Even in the eyes of his own village, they wouldn't accept it. He could not do many works because of unbelief. 甚至在耶稣自己的家乡，他的家乡人同一个村里的人都不认他，他在自己的家里都什么都做不了。It is true. He came of David's line. 事实上，他确实是大卫的子孙。But his family, Joseph's family, was unknown to those in authority. 但是约瑟的家，在这些当权者眼里，那根本不算一个，是一个普通的贫苦人家。See, they were looking for someone to be born in an influential family. 他们是在期待这个弥赛亚将要生在一个有影响力的、有权有势的家里。Uh, a family that regarded them as the leaders of society. Ah,、uh, 或者要生在一个家里，至少能够承认啊、uh, 这些呃、uh, 这些当权者在这个社会里面的这个掌权的地位。But here he was in the family of a poor carpenter in distant Galilee. 可惜耶稣生在一个遥远的加利利的那个偏远的地方，而且是在一个小家庭里面做一个木匠的儿子。See, and later, when he showed himself, there was no majesty or power. 后来当他出来出道的时候，他们看见他也没有什么家型美容，也没有什么啊、呃、这个了不得的能力
See, no one would be attracted to his appearance. So he said, "We saw him when he was not beautiful, and we loved him." That's why Isaiah said he grew up in dry ground. This is why Isaiah said he grew up in dry ground. This is why Isaiah said he grew up in dry ground. Now in verse three,、uh, now he says, "Because of this worldview, he would be despised and rejected." 在第三节，以赛亚是说什么呢？根据这样的一个世界看待耶稣的这个情况呢，他将要被人藐视，被人厌弃。Now it's interesting. In saying that, Isaiah was intimating that he was doing things that were catching people's attention. 嗯、呃，这尽管是他说他被藐视，被人厌弃，但是实际上呢？你这个耶和华，这个以赛亚实际上也是在暗示什么呢？他会做一些事情引起人的注意。No one despises a poor farmer who is working、um, his farm. 呃，你想一个在一个在这个农田里面种田的农民，不会被人什么说我们这么多人都藐视这个人，我们不会去做这个这个故意的敌视这么一个老农民的这么一个一件事情。No one would,、uh, especially,、um, be interested in this、um, poor carpenter making furniture for these poor houses. 那些人对这个贫苦的木匠的儿子，呃，做一些木匠，给一些贫穷人家里，呃，敲个凳儿啊，做个做桌子这样的事情，他们不感兴趣，也也不感兴趣去藐视或者攻击这样的人。They, I mean, they would just. Ignore him. They would say, "People say, 'Do you know Joseph?'" Ah, if someone asks, "Do you know Joseph?" 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 Ah, if 可能你这个讲完以后，你就知道，你再跟他多说，他也就不知道什么了。这个你们的谈话该结束。But this one was despised. 但是这个人是什么？他被藐视。And so he had to be despised for doing something. 那意思说，他藐视他所做的事情，那一定是他做了什么事情，然后你还是藐视，故意藐视他。And、um, he was despised for what he was claiming. 那么他因为什么东西被藐视呢？就是他自己宣称，但是人还是藐视他。And he was actively forsaken. 后面说他是被人厌弃，实际什么呢？人是故意要厌弃他。You see, it wasn't it wasn't a matter of just like like I said about Joseph. They they just don't pay any attention to him because he, he because he's there's nothing to see. But this one, he was actively forsaken. 这里讲的说被人厌弃，他是一个主动式的一个意思，就是说人是故意要去厌弃他，啊，不像他的父亲约瑟，那是被人遗忘，因为他是个无名小卒。但是耶稣不同，耶稣是人知道他，但是人厌弃他。And this is how the Jews responded to Jesus. 这实在我们知道，在新约的时候，就是犹太人都认识耶稣。都知道耶稣，但是他们弃绝耶稣。But Isaiah added something in verse four, which actually did not incriminate the Jews. 在以赛亚书五十三章的第四节，啊，这个以赛亚加了一一节圣经进去以后呢，让犹太人觉得不以为然。He said he was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. 他说他诚然担当我们的忧患，背负我们痛苦。Now, when the servant came, he came for the purpose of paying the fine for the sins of the world. 我我们知道耶和华的仆人来的这个用意只有一个，就是他要担当世人的罪孽。See, the Old Testament prophesied this. 旧约的先知实际上已经预言了这个。This sin caused mankind all kinds of turmoil and heartache. 啊，这个罪孽，人类的罪，实际上导致了全人类所有的苦难。这个和和和和这个可怕的这个这个刑法。And Jesus knew it. 啊，耶稣深知这个原因。It grieved him that people could not see that what he was doing was drawing them back to their God. 
，所以这让耶稣这个常常经历这种啊、呃、这种痛苦和忧患，是因为什么呢？他所在经历，他所要做的事情，世上有罪的人他们不领情，他们也不明白。That's why when you read the Gospels and you see so many times, Jesus had compassion on this one and that one and the other one. 呃，在新约这个四大福音书里面，我们看见有多少次耶稣呢？什么看见这世上这个被罪孽、被罪恶捆绑的这些受各样的这个苦、这个灾祸和苦难的人，他什么他就对他们有怜悯之心，他就动了慈心。You see, bringing them back to God would release them from the worry and anxiety they were living in. 这个把这些罪人从焦虑。和呃，这个忧患和这些苦难当中解救出来的唯一办法，就是把他们带回到神的面前。You see, then we come to verse five. 我们要看第五节。Now Isaiah states clearly what will happen to him, uh, and why it would happen. 在以赛亚在第五节的时候呢，他五三章五节呢，他详细的解释了为什么啊。会发生在耶稣身上的事情，耶稣将要经历什么样的苦难 ？You see, verse verse five says, and he was pierced through for our transgressions. 耶稣在第五节说，他为我们的过犯受害。He was pierced through. That, that I mean, Isaiah said, this is what's going to happen to him. 耶稣，这个以赛亚说，他要将被刺穿啊，这个刀要刺穿他。Isaiah was telling how he would die. 他讲到耶稣将要如何的受难 ，But talking about a type of execution, Isaiah knew nothing about. 耶以以赛亚这是在讲一种他根本就不知晓的，后来在六百年以后将要发明的一种刑法，叫做十字架刑。And then that, and then in that verse it goes on that execution was going to he was going to suffer was because of our transgressions. Not his. 这个以赛亚这里在这里解释说，他所受的这个受害和被压伤，是因为我们的过犯，我们的罪孽，不是因为他自己的缘故。所以 he was, he he says he was crushed for our iniquities. 以赛亚说他为我们的罪孽压伤。And the chastening we should receive fell on him. 这个换句话说，我们。最有应得的这个应得的东西呢，就应得的刑罚落到耶稣的身上。And his scourgings brings us healing. 他他受的刑罚，我们得平安；他受的鞭鞭伤，我们得医治。See, this is a picture of what the servant had to suffer. 这就是神的仆人必须要经经历的这种苦难。This was where he offered his body as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. 这也是耶耶稣最后要把自己献上来作为赎这个世人罪孽的这个赎罪祭。Then Isaiah goes on and says, makes a statement about what we people are doing in this scenario. 呃，第六节是以赛亚介绍我们作为罪人，我们在这个整个啊耶稣受难的这个事情上，我们的贡献是什么 ？Says and he says, we are like sheep who have gone astray. 这第六节，以赛亚说：“我们都如羊走迷，个人偏行己路。” Now I want you to pay attention here. Isaiah does not say that we have gotten lost. 这这大家仔细看啊，这个要引起大家重视的，就在第六节，以赛亚没有说我们都是失散的。But we have each one deliberately gone astray. 换句话说，我们不是被动的失丧、失去了、遗失了，乃是我们主动的偏行几路、走迷了。Sheep do not tend to scatter。这个，呃，这个羊呢，是它不是故意，就羊不是那种，呃，好像是，呃，这个，呃，没有没有故意分散的这么一种一种本性。Goats do, but sheep don't。但这个山羊呢，是会有这种本性。The sheep stay together as a flock. 这个羊呢是会待在羊群里面。So the lostness Isaiah is speaking about is lostness that we have brought upon ourselves. 所以羊群的本性本来是要待在一个羊群里面，归一个牧人管。但是呢
以赛亚讲的，我们这些如羊走迷，偏心己路，是指说我们本来应该待在神的面前，受神的牧养，但是我们故意的走偏，走走走散，各走各的路。But here is the marvel. 这里是就是看到这么一个令人惊，这个令人震惊的这个事实。In spite of our waywardness, the Lord caused the iniquity which was ours to fall on the servant. 这个神的奇妙的恩典就在于什么呢？尽管我们是故意的、主动的要这个走迷偏行几路，但是耶和华却使我们众人的罪孽都归到他的仆人无辜的羔羊身上。Okay, that's a picture, uh, uh, a very graphic and not happy picture of the servant. 呃，到目前为止，整个对这个仆人的描述啊，是非常的令人。呃，这个不是令人愉快的啊！这么这么一个看见非很很凄惨的、很令人沉重的这么一个形象。But in verse seven, it tells us how the servant took this. 这个第七节开始是，这个尽管这一切都加到他身上了，这个仆人自己他是怎么样来承担的呢 ？You see, Isaiah said he was oppressed and he was afflicted. 第七节说他被欺压。This was not pleasant for him. 对这个仆人来说，这不是一件令人愉快的这个经历。But he did not complain. 但是他有没有开口这个这个抱怨呢？他没有。He did not try to stop the affliction that was happening to him. 他也没有试图阻止这样在在他身上这个这样的苦难。He was like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. 他这个就像羔羊，羊羔被牵到宰杀之地。It does not squeal or cry out. 他既没有开声，也没有绝，就这个呃这个逃。So、you put, you try to kill a pig, he makes an awful noise. 如果你要杀一头猪的话，哇，那猪不知道要这个猪杀猪般的声音，那是吵死了。When the lamb is silent. 但是呢，羊羔呢是在剪毛的人手下没有声音。Now it is interesting, isn't it? That Isaiah uses the illustration of a lamb. Oh, this is very interesting. Is that Isaiah describes Jesus suffering and not speaking out? He actually uses what? To describe a lamb. A lamb. You see, a lamb was a symbol of a sacrifice for the Jews. We know that for the Jews, a lamb symbolizes sacrifices. You remember John the Baptist said, "Behold the Lamb of God," when he's pointing to Jesus. Of course, remember the prophet Isaiah said. 这个看呐、啊，神上帝的羔羊，它实际上是在指上帝的羔羊耶稣。And Isaiah here、uh, refers to him as a lamb that did not open his mouth in protest. 呃，他实际上，以赛亚就在讲耶稣当时的情况。他说，耶稣像羊羔被宰到，就牵到宰杀之地，他没有抗议，也没有为自己辩护，更没有抱怨。You see, he just pictured us as a flock of sheep who's gone astray. 他前面刚刚在第六节讲到，我们这些罪人是什么呢？硬着心，故意要偏行己路。Now the servant is suffering in place of the sheep, and Isaiah calls him a lamb. 但是这个仆人现在呢，就在为这些故意偏行己路的羊啊，这个来受苦、受欺压啊。以赛亚把它称为这个羊羔。And everything that was happening to him. He did not open his mouth to protest to what, or to to that. 无论什么样的不不公不平和这个欺压临到他的这个临到他的身上，他都不开口，他都不辩护，他也不抗议。You see, this was the servant clinching the work of God to bring salvation to the world. 这就是上帝的仆人，他紧紧的抓着这个父的应许。他要把这个成就父的旨意，把救恩赐给地上的人。And if we, we when we read the passion account of Jesus, we see how that he did not try to stop anything the Jews were doing or the Romans were doing. He went right through it to the very end. 如果我们在重读耶稣在这个四大福音书里面他受难的过程，我们看见
，耶稣从来没有试图去阻止任何一个啊、呃，这个他受难的当中的每一个每一道程序，每一个每一个细节啊、呃，犹太人和罗罗马人在欺压他的时候，在要定死他的时候，都侮辱他的时候，他从来没有试图阻止。See, without mentioning a cross, Isaiah draws a picture of the whole drama that happened. 尽管以赛亚没有用十字架这三个字，但是以赛亚是旧约先知里面非常重要的一个先知，他几乎就像亲眼目睹耶稣在十字架上，在各个他所经历的所有一切。He mentions why it all happened. It happened because the the sheep had gone astray. 呃，他解释了为什么耶稣要经过这个十字架的苦难，乃是我们这些羊，这有罪的人都个人偏行己路。It mentioned how that they did not accept him as the uh, um, the Lamb of God. He he, this is talking talking about we uh we these sheep, uh we these sinners, this world does not accept Jesus as the Lamb of God. They did not accept him as the Messiah, suffering Messiah. This person, they did not accept him as the Messiah, suffering Messiah. This person, they did not accept him as the Messiah, suffering Messiah. And in the end, he had to. Die being pierced. 最后他必须要被刺穿，他必须要这个这个死在十字架上面。You see, you have to remember this. At this time, when Isaiah wrote this, the way that the Jews executed was to stone a person. 大家要记得，当以赛亚在这个年代的时候，先知以赛亚的年代，要处死一个人的。这个以色列人极刑的最高的刑罚就是用石头打死一个人。John and Isaiah doesn't mention anything about stones. 但是还很有意思，以赛亚居然把犹太人最常见的死刑，他不用在这个他讲的时候，他说这个呃神的仆人不会是被石头钉呃打死的。And so this is the core of all of this that that、um, Isaiah is talking about. These discourses that Isaiah is talking about from chapter 40 on. 啊，所以我们看见整个呃以以赛亚是从第四十章开始一直到现在，我们看见这个一直在关于耶和华的仆人，现在已经到了一个重要的一个高潮。You remember, there were nine chapters that we already finished. 啊，我们还记得呢，前面我们已经完成了九个章节。We're into the ninth, the second group of nine chapters. We're now going to the second group of nine chapters. And there's another nine chapters afterwards. Then, in the third chapter, there's another nine chapters. Now, look at see. There's nine, and here nine in the beginning, and nine afterwards, and then nine in the middle, and right in the middle of that middle nine is chapter fifty-three. 大家再仔细想想，我们是要要动一下这个这个简单的算术哈。总共后面从四十章开始到后面是总共二十七章，二十七章分成三个九章。那么前面的九章过完，后面的这个九章去掉，中间的九章的中间段就是乌吉赛亚书第五十三章。And it says these are twenty-seven chapters that talk about uh, uh, the salvation that God brings to the world. 啊，我们知道，以赛亚书四十章到最后的六十六章，总那个后面的二十七章的中心思思想是，啊，神的仆人要把救恩，这个这个不但要成就在十字架上，还要带给世人。And right in the middle of it is the, the Messiah's death. 关于这个二十七章的主题是神的救恩。好，在二十七章的中间的中间最中心位置的第五十三章是讲到米赛亚之死。And you ask, well, where is the where is the、uh, resurrection come in? 那你说这个弥赛亚死了呢？应该是有这个复复复活，复活什么时候来呢 ？Okay, next week, uh, we will take the last uh verses of chapter fifty-three. 我们下星期将要完成这个五十三章的后面几节经文 ，which uh includes the resurrection. 呃，这个后面的几节经文，其中就包括耶稣的复活。And so this,、uh, this, the title of this,、uh, this chapter is this, uh, God's salvation is,、uh, 
is, how would I say, I use the word clinched. Clinched means it's, 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 it's executed, it's done. Right when it's actually done. Uh,神的应许,神的救恩,我们讲,以赛亚书,紧紧的抓住了,这个,以赫华所应许的救恩,这个重中之重的主题,这个,他把他写的非常的清楚。这个整一卷书,尤其是一下子53章成为这个皇冠上的珍珠般的这么一个章节。And all that was done because God loved His creation. 这个,神的仆人的中心工作是救恩,耶和华之所以让这个救恩成就是因为他爱这世上的人,他所造的人。He was angry with sin. 他对罪恶有极大的震动。And His anger would bring death. To anyone who sinned. So he sent his son, he sent his servant to uh, to receive that anger, to, to take on himself that anger of his and die in the place of people. It always amazes me why people turn down salvation. I know why, because uh, Satan has hold of them. Our common sense, our intelligence should should cause us to accept the gospel as soon as they hear it. But in this case, our intelligence doesn't help us at all. 但是很可惜, 啊, 我们, 我们的理性, 我们的这个所谓的聪明, 都不能, 啊, That's why you and I have to pray. For the people we're witnessing to. So, Tishong, this is just because of this reason, you and me need to pray for those who are witnessing to us. In this world, there are still souls left to pray for, to pray for God. Because someone else has to get involved in the person so that he will believe. One person who wants to believe must have the strength to enter this person's life so that he can believe. And that other one is God. He's the only one who could do it. That's today's lesson. Do you have any thoughts, questions? Never tired of reading this half portion of the passage. <laughs> I know, but you can never. Each time you read it, it is still, it's still amazing. It brings, it brings so many ideas into our minds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah.。Yeah
Alex, will you pray for us, please?